Welcome back to the shop. I'm just cleaning up. It's such a mess in here. It's it's amazing that, you know, I guess a, an analogy might be, you go out every morning and you look at the tree in your front yard. You don't realize it, but every day that tree just gets a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and a little bit bigger. And you just never notice it. I guess it's sort of like the way I gain weight. I just, you know, I, <laughs> I can see it over time, but, you know, daily I don't, don't, don't notice those things. So anyway... Um, the shop, you know, it just is a creeping mess. I'm, I spend a lot of time in it, and, you know, every time I make a little bit of a mess, and I clean up just a, a little bit less than, you know, the mess that I made. So, progressively, it's worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So, anyway, I've been spending some time cleaning things up and, and putting some stuff up for sale, believe it or not. I've got some, uh, some just motors and stuff I've been hanging on to forever, and I realize, you know, I don't, I don't need to hold on to this stuff anymore. So, so anyway, I'm going to try to make a little bit of room in the shop and just get rid of the stuff that I've been kicking around forever. Um, anyway, just a little spring cleaning, if you will. But it's, cleaning bores me. So what I'm going to try to do is now that I've sort of, you, you'll see here in a little bit that I've got my, my grinding station, if you will. Uh, I've sort of got it rearranged and cleaned off, and I made a spot for my wire wheels and things like that. Uh, so anyway, what, I, what I've always sort of lacked is, is a decent means of recording when I'm, when I'm cleaning things up. And it's not that watching somebody wire wheels real exciting or buffering or something like that, but you know, it's, a, it's just filler. It's sort of B-roll or whatever for the channel. And and I still owe Bill a video on, on how I polish stuff. And I realized that, you know, before I do that video, it would be nicer if I made some sort of contraption to help the way I shoot. Right now I have a shop crane, and this is a the crane I can move around and do whatever I want to, and it's very handy. It really, it really helps to, to get the shot. And it's sort of partitioned off in the corner of the bench, and it sort of like oh, protrudes over the top, and then, you know, I'm here. But anyway, what I'm talking about now is, uh, is I need to... This is a magic marker. It's probably not ideal for this, but anyway, what I've got is this table. So, so this table with my, my equipment on it, and so I've got these various machines. I've got two sanders, a grinder, a, another buffer, another uh, grinder there. What I need to do, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build a, this vertical component here. And this vertical component, what I want it to do is sort of boom out over and then I can put the camera, however you draw a camera, here and then and then this is going to traverse each way. So so when I'm working here, 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 I'm able to boom this thing around to wherever I need it to be, but by and large it's out of the way because it's going to be set on uh, in the middle of the table here. So I'm going to take some stock that I have laying around. I've got this old piece of rectangle tubing and this pizza piece of uh, looks to be like 5 8 inch uh, steel of some sort. Um, I'm gonna weld them together and make a that little beam. So let's do that real quick, and then uh, drill a hole in the table. And I'm not sure how much of this I'll capture. I'll try to get some of it. But uh, anyway, we'll build this, and then we'll get a shot from over there, and we'll see how that works out. Hey, right, so this is really goofy looking, but you know I needed something to hold the support out there, so I just stuck a wrench in there and a portable vise, and then I've got a square here, and uh, that looks pretty square to me. So anyway, I'm gonna get the MIG welder out and. Weld that and see how it works. Alright, so I MIG welded that together and then ground the weld down because it was ugly. Uh, but, you know, when you grind it down, it, if I was to paint that, it would look pretty good. And this is pretty sturdy, you know. I'm, I'm not hanging anything but the weight of a camera off of it, so, so this should be more than good enough. And, and serendipitously, in, in that bucket of wrenches that I found on the tractor when I bought it, was this piece of steel, which happens to be about the right OD, or have right ID for the OD of this. It's a little bit off, but uh, I'm going to try to square it up and weld it on there, and then that should give you a, a nice little pedestal for this to sit on. So I'm going to weld that and bring you back. Alright, so I've got the bottom on there now, and I just, you know, you can see the kind of welds that that, that little MIG welder puts out. It's a great tool. It's a wire, wire core MIG welder. You know, for home gamers like me, just tinkering around, tacking stuff together, it's fun. It's 110 volts. You just tack things together with it. It's not structure. Well, I mean, that having a big arc welder is nice, and you know, having the little MIG welder is even handier because it's so easy to just plug in and carry around with you. 
like an idiot, I started welding on the bottom, and this is effectively going to be the, the surface that this rides on. So I had to take the old hand file out and, and try to get down in there and, and get that flat down now. But that should be relatively square. And, uh, anyway. Alright, so the video that I posted the other day, I was sort of lamenting about how I need to find a place for my wire wheels. I, and I realized that, you know, part of it is that I have another bench grinder that I wasn't really doing anything with. And this is a 3600 RPM. So I put smaller wheels on it. These are 6 inch wheels on an 8 inch machine. I had 8 inch wheels on it, but it's just freaky. If, if you realize RPMs are indifferent to the radius of the wheel. But if you think about, if you had small tires on your car, you're going to go slower, but if you put big tires, you're going to go faster. That rim speed you really really makes a big difference when you put a giant wire wheel on there, uh, the 8-inch wire wheel. And, and just, just for comparative, well, now that I have everything put away, let me take it apart. So, you know, this, this is an 8-inch wire wheel. And then, you know, I think this is, this is a 5 or a 6. Anyway, the smaller wheels are, are much, much more manageable. This is probably a true 6, yeah. So this is like a 6-inch fiber wheel. But, you know, the little 5-inch wheels are good, too. So, uh, so anyway, it's, it's probably just a, you know, your preference, personal preference kind of thing. But, but for me, when I'm out here trying to relax in the shop, I, I don't like the, the thought of something blowing up and maiming me. So the, the little wheels feel a little safer. So anyway, I've got that one. Now I've got the low speed 1725. Uh, then I have the Power Tech, which it's got the buffered wheel on it. This is 3600 RPM. Apparently, from from what I what I know, the the higher RPMs are better for buffing. All right, this this doesn't get a lot of time on the channel. This is my Kalamazoo belt sander. This is also a 42 inch belt sander. It has a it has a locking mechanism here, and then you can press this wheel down. And change the belts on it and and that's pretty good but it has a platen on it that's that's on here permanently pretty much I don't I don't like to take this platen on and off it's pretty difficult to remove and uh, but it, it's got a little bit more power than my mead but I just don't use the machine because the belts are a little bit more difficult to change than my mead let me let me bring this out a little bit more all right, so this is my mead belt sander. Again, this this angle isn't really conducive to uh, what I'm trying to demonstrate here. But anyway, Mr. Pete's been going on. He he recast the platen or the the plate here on his mead. It's it's a really really great series. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. But anyway, this this little mechanism here where I can boom it around and see what we're doing is uh it, I think going to be helpful and it, and it might help isolate some of the vibrations because it's sort of a little bit more distant away and actually affixed to the table. So, I guess to that end, let me go ahead and clean something up using this and see how, how, see how it works. What a good day to be in the shop. Rain and more rain. Now I'm going to clean up this wrench. No idea what it is. You can see USA on it. It might even say snap on. 11 sixteenths and 3 quarter inch snap on. Now, no sandblasting, none of that stuff. Let me just wire wheel this, and we'll go through the different motions. We'll go with the, the sort of rougher wire wheels, and then all the way through the sander and the buffing wheel, or the nylon wheel, and we'll see how good we can get this looking. So that is just the wire wheel, obviously, and and that's you know pretty much good enough. You could you could throw this back in the in the workbench and it would be fine. I would maybe wipe it down with some furniture polish or something like that. But you know we can get a lot better with this. So I think what I want to do now is bring this over to the sander, and then we'll see if we can get a little bit more cleaned up than this. The the, the fiber wheel that I have here. Well, let, let's let's just give it a try real quick. I don't think I think that it will make it look nicer. However, I don't think it's going to really get into some of that pitting that's there. And I'd like to get that out of here. And and you know this is going to kill some people, but you know I don't really care about snap on. It's not. 
not, I'm not a fanboy. Uh, you know, I understand they make good tools, and, and people that make a living with this kind of stuff really, you know, have a, have some respect for the things. And, and I get it, I do, but, you know, I'm just not that guy. Now, see, this machine is so much more pleasant to run with the, the lower RPM, the probability of it just ripping the tool out of your hands and smashing it into your flip-flop wearing feet. Now, see, that's, that's pretty nice there, you know, compared to the other side. I think if I had to make do with two two things in the shop, I would I would have a well I would have this setup. I would go with the low RPM machine, 1725, with you know a couple different assorted wire wheels and a fiber wheel. That would be that would be my my preference if I had to. But obviously, you know, I need more than that. I can't just live off of one tool. Let's bring this over to the sander and see if we can make this a little bit nicer. Now, I hate to go off too many rants on this thing, but, but you know, I, I'd like to just say that the, the mead is nicer than the Kalamazoo because, uh, you know, let me try that again. Okay, sorry, side note here. I'm going to use the mead. These machines, I, I don't know, I've got a tachometer. I could probably measure what the difference is in speed and all that stuff, but I, I know this one's a little bit faster. This Kalamazoo is a little bit faster than the mead. And that's probably because of the way I geared this, because I used pulleys that I had laying around. But but what you're going to notice here is that this, this machine can actually be stepped back behind that other pulley over there. And that will give you some additional room to, if you needed to put a set of scissors in there or something, it would give you that much more room. And you see how easy that is to adjust, you know. But, so the Kalamazoo, which is an expensive machine, I got this for 60 bucks at a tractor show. But right now, I can't, you know, you can't get anything into here without having to, to deal with this upright. And I think for deburring and, and, you know, certain types of jobs, this machine is probably awesome. But, you know, if I, if I had to pick one of these things, I would go with the Mead all day long. And, and this was made by, I think, by Mead, but then was rebranded as you know a delta an atlas uh you know everybody and their brother kind of thing and you know i i did a a couple of videos on this where i restored it and it gets you know a lot of use a lot of use and uh anyway that was a fun restoration but my restoration wasn't nearly as good as mr pete's go watch his and um anyway but i'm going to use this one because it's uh it's going to be easier for me to come in here and uh and there's less plate in the back so anyway let me get going. Alright, I'm going to go off on a quick rant. I said earlier that I've put some stuff up for sale, and, and I use Craigslist list Marketplace because it tends to be, I mean, in my experience, less shady than than craigslist and stuff like that but but you know i've got people that just just boggles the mind it just boggles the mind it it you know i i don't know how much stuff i can show on facebook but anyway guy says just says address so i said well okay well, he's, he's you know concise i'll give you my address so i give him my address and then Whoever this character is says, it round, like, like, you know, it round. I don't want to, I don't want to like that, damn it. Anyway, literally, it round. I assume that, you know, maybe that, maybe that was a typo, so I, I said, like, is it still around? Is what I'm assuming, so I just wrote yes, and then silence. I said, any idea when you're coming by? Silence. Why? Why do people do this? It's my, my older brother calls it window shopping. It, anyway, it bothers me. I'd rather give away the motor. If shipping wasn't such a burden, I would be more than happy to give you this Honda lawnmower engine for a push mower. Anyway, the the belt sanders are great tools, and you can see they've done. Hopefully, you can see that they've done a good job on getting out most of this. But there tends to be 
I guess, I don't know the right terminology, but like with a saw, when a saw is cutting, it will tend to, we'll use the sanding disc, bow one way or the other, and I, think, I believe that's called the kerf. And, and the sander will do the same thing too. As, it, as it's tracking, it will sort of hit one side and then bow over, if you can, if that makes any sense to you. So it'll get that kerf in it and skip over as you can see that it's done here. And you know, that, that might be beneficial in some cases where you don't want to take out too much in the center where the, where the maker's mark would be. However, in this particular case, it's really not doing anything and I'm taking off more on the sides than I'd want to. So what I think I'm going to try, or what, what, I'm, what I know I'm going to try, is, is I've got these, this is 120 grit sandpaper on this squishy wheel on the end of a die grinder. And I'm going to get in here and this is going to help me pick up some of these spots here and especially where these edges are reconciled. That's, that's particularly hard to get. Uh, Scout Crafter does a remarkable job with using a, 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 like a, a piece of wood in the back and he really gets in there and does a nice job with that stuff. I don't have that level of dexterity. I'm not that good at it. I just have alternate tools. So I'm sure that technique, some can master it. I just, I'm not there yet. So, so I'm going to use this and we're going to see how, how this works out. So you want to watch yourself with these. Sanding typically isn't dangerous. However, the edges of this are like razor blades, so you don't want to you don't want to get yourself with it because it's like a paper cut from hell. Alright, so that was able to get in and sort of knock that center section down, and it, it's pretty good. You can't see, you know, your reflection in there as of yet because, you know, it's got that 120 get grit swirl to it. And I've mentioned before the fiber wheel is, I think on paper it says it's 80 or 120 grit, but I think it's more akin to something like a, a 400 grit. So let's bring this over to the fiber wheel. and. And touch it up with that and see how that goes and and there's some spots in here there were just some holes if you will I guess the higher carbon content is it leaves it more prone to some of these these pits and whatnot and I don't want to take too much of this wrench away uh, um, but I, you know I wanted to get it nice but but I don't want to hog too much of the metal out for every low spot so bring it over there and see how we can do on the fiber wheel all right try to get you a little bit of a closer shot on here I I'm not sure how the lighting will work on this side of the shop since this is, this is the first time I've ever filmed over here and it's not directly under the light, which is, you know, I'll have to get another one. Anyway, let's see how it turns out. Alright, now that's looking pretty good. Now the one thing that I haven't done at all yet is try to clean the center up in here. I wouldn't dare put this into the, the 3500 RPM machine because it would just sort of toss this thing across the room and I wouldn't have any control over it. That's why this, the narrow wheel is much more forgiving. Just got off the phone with the guy. He's going to come pick up that motor in the morning. A completely different guy. So Craigslist Marketplace can be good at times. Um, and you know, if you're buying something, you know, is it still available? When can I meet you to buy, to pick this up, you know? Be straightforward. Don't say it round. Ooh, is that shaking? That's shaking a lot. This, this wire wheel on the end here, it works, but it's not my favorite. I'm going to take it off so it's not shaking the camera. And, and you know, every once in a while, wire wheels are just no good. And I think this is one of those no good ones. Ha. Ah. Look what manages what happens to fit. Alright, so I've wiped it down. We can see that the the shine on this is pretty good. You can see your reflection there. And that and for a tool that, that really looked pretty bad, I think this came out pretty good, all things considered. There's some pitting that you know you're just not gonna get it all sometimes 
So, so that turned out all right. This is a Model S 2224B. I'm not sure if that means anything to anybody. But um, anyway, it's cleaned up pretty good. I can see that, that some of the 120 grit sandpaper that I'd used has left some, some, some marks in there. So if I wanted to get this better, what I probably should have done is, is follow that up with some 220 and then some 400 and then some 800 and then, you know, just keep going until you're completely tired and then, <laughs> you know. But, but for removing the patina, getting down to a decent finish and then get a workable tool again, I think this is more than good enough. Uh, I think what I'm going to do with this one, I, I, I'm a real big fan of the Johnson's Paste Wax. And and honestly, the, the, the thing that I noticed with the shellac, and I was real happy with the shellac for a while, but I, but I noticed that, that it actually sort of picks up some white, like a white hue to it because of the humidity down there. It's just, it's the humidity is just outrageous all the time. So anyway, I had I had only used the this bow shield stuff once before on a vise that doesn't get handled. It's sitting over there on the shelf. I haven't touched it since I redid it before. So I'm gonna sh spray this with this stuff and then put it in the drawer and then you know try to try to make a mental note that that I want to keep an eye and see how this one uh, holds up over time with that bow shield on it. So, uh, but you know to that end. Just polishing and buffing it will, will provide some level of protect, protection too, because you know there's there's less area for the the moisture to sort of sit in and, and create patina. So anyway, you know this this video was all over the place today. I appreciate it. I uh, I wanted I'm gonna just say something uh, in particular about uh, one of the viewers. You know, well, actually to all the viewers, let, let me not confine it to one thing. Everybody's been so great. This has been, been you, you know, just, just, just such a great community. I appreciate all the comments. I've been trying to get back through all of them and catch up on some of the stuff, but, but you know, some of the comments are just, just so great. And it's mentally sort of exhausting for me to, to go through it and catch up on all these things. And, and I appreciate all the, the kind words that everyone's had. Um, also... On a different note, I want to I want to put a, a special uh, thank you to Ben Mall. Ben was helping me uh, with the logo for the channel, and uh, and he did an outstanding job. Just just a, just an outstanding job. So and, and he's and he's brought up some pretty interesting points. But I think I'm going to include the the logo that I'm most fond of at the, at at this particular time. But but anyway, he's just just done a just a remarkable job. So I'm, I thank you very much, Ben. And I will do an episode specifically on the logo and why it is the way it is and it, it's, there there's there's a lot behind it and and that episode will come up in the future um but anyway i just want to say thank you ben i appreciate that and, and thank you for everyone else for for watching subscribing and and commenting and uh i hope you enjoyed today's video so anyway thanks have a good night